What is America? A brief overview of America as it exists today. A second gen and liberated panda production. America the beautiful, land of the free, home of the brave. That is how people around the world and here at home describe America. But how did it get this way? First, let's talk about what America is and is not. America was not founded on a common ethnicity or religion that unites Americans as a common identity. Rather, America was founded on a set of beliefs and convictions providing its people certain unalienable rights, which are rights that the government cannot take away. These rights are embedded in the Bill of Rights of the U.S. Constitution. To be an American has nothing to do with bloodlines and genealogy and everything to do with embracing these certain inalienable rights. Now that we've covered the fundamentals, let's take a look at America as it exists today. The United States of America is a big place. It presently is a nation of about 310 million people spanning 2,800 miles from the East Coast to the West Coast and containing 1.9 billion acres. America is currently the third largest country in the world behind Russia and Canada. And depending on your source, America and China are virtually tied in terms of size. Just to put all of this in context, it would take you around two to three days of nonstop driving to get from New York to California without brakes. With brakes, it would take at least five days. By comparison, mainland China, the most comparable country to the U.S. in size, is a nation of about 1.4 billion people spanning 3,100 miles from the east to west, containing 2.4 billion acres. Now that you know the basics, you may be wondering, what is these United States anyway? Just as the United States name suggests, the country is made up of 50 individual states that form one singular country. While this setup may seem strange, there's actually a logical reason for it. Since America was first settled by the British with 13 separate and distinct colonies along America's eastern coast as early as 1507, these 13 original colonies matured and grew in size together as time went on. Because the original 13 colonies were separated from their home country in England during this time, the 13 colonies had to learn to work together to survive and eventually thrive. After a while, the original 13 colonies began to be viewed as a singular entity. These 13 original colonies famously united in declaring their independence from the British, crowned pursuant to the Declaration of Independence in 1776, which is now one of the most celebrated and renowned documents in history. After the U.S. Revolutionary War, when the 13 colonies banded together to defeat the British Army and gain their independence, the 13 colonies discovered that they were more similar than different and stayed united and became their own states. As more time passed, and new waves of settlers continued America's expansion across the nation, resulting in new states joining the original 13 states. Today, America boasts 50 official states and 14 territories. And who knows, we may be seeing more states to come. The Constitution grants Congress the authority to admit new states. Since America is such a large country, it is useful to think of America as grouped into four different regions, the Northeast, the South, the Midwest, and the West, each with their own distinct cultures, traditions, terrain, laws, accents, and even way of life. The Northeast contains nine states. Some notable Northeastern states include Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Of these 11 states, seven northeastern states were part of the original 13 colonies. Historically, immigrants first arriving in America landed in this region and stayed, so there is much diversity in terms of people from different ethnicities and cultures. The Midwest contains 12 states. Some notable Midwestern states include Illinois, Ohio, and Kansas. These states are home to the plains, tornadoes, and make up 
much of the Rust Belt, which was known for its older industrial areas that drove the growth of America in the 19th and 20th centuries. Originally, the Midwest was settled by a large number of Southern European and German immigrants. Today, the Midwest is sparsely populated and consists predominantly of farmland and cattle grazing. This region typically has fluctuating weather patterns, ranging from warm temperatures to snow in a single week. Crazy, huh? The South claims the most states, as 16 states belong to the South. Some notable southern states include Virginia, Georgia, Florida, and Texas. These states tend to have much warmer and sunnier weather. The South has quite an infamous reputation in U.S. history as it tried to secede, aka leave the USA, in order to form their own country during the 1860s, since the South's economy largely depended on the free labor of slaves. After losing the U.S. Civil War, the South rejoined the U.S. Today, the southern states have some of the fastest growing population in the U.S. This region typically has warm winters and hot summers. The West is the fourth and final region, making up the U.S.A., containing 13 states. Some notable western states include Wyoming, Colorado, California, Alaska, and Hawaii. This region is known for its diverse and its beautiful natural terrain, including the tallest mountains, colorful deserts, lush forests, and the Pacific Ocean coastline. Today, much of the western states continue to enjoy modest population growth. This region typically experiences extreme weather, depending on the actual state. America's capital is in Washington, D.C., which, strange as it seems, is a separate entity from the 50 states. It is not considered a state at all, actually. D.C., or the District of Columbia, was intentionally created to be a city that belongs to no particular state, and it's still this way today. The rationale for this was since America's founding fathers were from different states, they envisioned D.C. as a place for them and future American leaders to govern and go back to their respective home states. It was not meant to be a place for people to live. It was not until later that ordinary American citizens and other D.C. residents populated the area. D.C. has come a long way since then. D.C. residents were unable to vote in presidential elections until fairly recently, and unlike residents of America's 50 states, D.C. residents still do not have the right to vote for representation in Congress. While America contains 50 separate states, each governed by their own state government, America also includes a separate federal government that also governs the nation as a whole. Sounds overly complicated? There's actually a reason that both a state and federal government exist. And the answer is our founding fathers were very concerned with the concept of separation of powers and creating a system of checks and balances to guard against any one branch of government from becoming too powerful. Bifurcating governance and diversifying powers between the federal and state government acts as an added security measure to limit government power. So what happens if state laws conflict with federal laws? The answer lies within Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution, more commonly known as the Supremacy Clause, which dictates that federal law is the supreme law of the land. The easiest way to understand state versus federal laws is that anything that isn't governed by federal law is governed by state laws. Sounds simple enough, right? This is why you can have 50 different laws on anything ranging from abortion, emission standards, to even something like the age of consent. Here's some state trivia. Did you know the age of consent is 18 in California, but 16 in South Carolina? <laughs> Still have questions? No worries. Liberated Panda has got you covered. We'll be explaining these animated explanatory videos with our weekly companion videos. In addition, Liberated Panda will be making more videos like these to help you navigate the world of American politics, culture, institutions, and more. 
So stay tuned for more videos.